this is Animat, and welcome back to the Muppet Vlog. Now, this time we're going to be looking into the 19th episode of the third season of The Muppet Show, which features Elkie Summer. Now, for those of you who don't know who Elkie Summer is, she was actually known as a very prominent actress back in the 60s. In fact, in many of the movies she appeared in, she would be co-starring with some of the biggest names of that era. Now, some of these would actually include A Shot in the Dark, which is actually the sequel to The Pink Panther, starring Peter Sellers. There's also The Art of Love with James Garner and Dick Van Dyke. Uh, there's also The Oscar with Stephen Boyd. And boy, did I get a wrong number with Bob Hope. But also, she actually won a Golden Globe for Best Newcomer Actress, which was a category at the time, for the prize in which she was featured with Paul Newman and Edward G. Robinson. But if I had to go and pick out something in which modern audiences might recognize her, she was actually the German voice of Yzma in The Emperor's New Groove. Now, going into the episode that she appeared in, I have to say that it was rather intriguing per se. I wouldn't say that this was a bad episode, but then again, I wouldn't say it was a well-structured episode either. And that's because with this one in particular, you could tell that they're experimenting with a few new things. And how can I put this? Well, it's mostly with uh, some of the other sketches, but uh, if I may go into the main story, because that's the one thing that they've been consecutive throughout the whole thing, and that's mostly that Beaker doesn't want to go and do whatever kind of crazy hijinks Dr. Bunsen Honeydew has in store for him, so he just wants to go and skip out on that. And instead, he decided to go and join Beauregard to work on the final number, to work on the sets, which is completely Egyptian-themed. And that's mostly the idea that they got there. And I have to say that in terms of the backstory that they would usually have, this is probably one of the weakest. Now, of course, there are a few funny bits here and there. Like, you got kind of like this comedic duo of the dumb one and the straight one happening. Uh, like, you, you got those classic bits going on, especially uh, with the theme of construction, since they are working on the set to have a completely Egyptian theme. And with that, uh, like the way that I feel like it has a problem is that for some reason, I feel like there's no punchline. You could tell like right at the beginning that they want to set up something really big or, or they want to do something with Dr. Bunsen and Honeydew. And considering that this plot kind of does center around Beaker or in this case, this would be more of a Beauregard and Beaker episode, which uh, it's kind of an unusual pairing, but uh, I guess they're going with that. But the thing is, Dr. Bunsen Honeydew only appears in the beginning, and literally that's it. Like, he wouldn't come back afterwards. And throughout the whole time, this is just setting up to go and build the big Egyptian number at the end. And and once it happens, it that it pretty that that's it. Like, there's nothing really special. Like, at the end of the the whole Egyptian thing is that like they would do their number and then suddenly this the like they have this whole ship going on and that would sink and that's it so my biggest problem is that I feel like they're setting up for this big gag but there's no punchline at the end there's nothing that feels satisfying with the end result of this whole setup that they're trying to plan with uh, Beaker joining with uh, Beauregard to make this whole Egyptian set. It's like, the, 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 the funny thing is, is that with the whole Egyptian theme finale is that it's more of a regular ending number. It's not like, um, you know, they didn't do anything special. It doesn't necessarily tie in with what's going on. Honestly, it's like I said before, there's just no punchline. If Dr. Bunsen Honeydew would somehow come back to get to bring in Beaker, maybe there would be a satisfying result with all this. Maybe there would be like this whole huge punchline or a conclusion with the shenanigans that Beaker got himself into with Beauregard or if Beaker decide to return to Dr. Bunsen Honeydew after hanging out with Beauregard, then it would feel complete. But no, it just ends off with uh, Beaker screwing up with some of the machinery and just running around with a chainsaw that's going out of control, and that's it. 
So it really did feel like there really is something missing to make this entire story work. Now, in terms of the other elements, like some of the other sketches that are included, this is where the intriguing part comes in. Because uh, this is actually the introduction, because somehow this is actually uh, a, re a recurring character, where we got Bobby Benson and his baby band, where you just got a bunch of babies actually using like little toys, like, uh, like little toy flutes, kazoos, uh, simplified pianos, rattles, and like all, all the little instruments that you would play when you're a toddler and they would actually do songs like uh, Pennsylvania 65000 and also Tuxedo Junction. But here's where things get interesting. Uh, they don't do that one after the other. Uh, these are actually two separate numbers where it starts out with the Pennsylvania 65000 and then like there would be a few sketches and then they go back with Bobby Benson again. Um, which honestly, I didn't expect that to happen. Normally, when it comes to The Muppet Show, there would be this one sketch, and then that's it. Like, they wouldn't continue afterwards. But for some reason, they decided to do it a recurring thing, and, like, I was a bit confused when watching it, but they decided to do, like, uh, you know, a comeback to it, which honestly is rather intriguing. But actually, that is not the only one. Uh, it's not just Bobby Benson and his baby band that they decided to do this kind of thing where uh, they would start with one sketch and then they would do it again. Uh, they also decided to do it with Pigs in Space, where it starts out with setting up uh, that Link Hogthrob, Julia Strangepork, and Miss Piggy are in the planet Coosbane, and they gotta go into, you know, they gotta mark history to be the first pigs to enter upon the planet Coosbane. And they actually separated that entirely, where you got the first part of entering upon the planet Coosbane, and then you got the second part when the pigs are actually in Coosbane. And with those two sketches, they actually work. They actually are pretty funny. And especially the first part is probably uh, one of the funniest bits that I've ever seen of Pigs in Space. And it really ended up becoming highly enjoyable and a lot of great gags actually did come out of it so um it was interesting that they decided to go into a two-parter with it i guess to go explore more into what they can do with the jokes but um overall i would have to say that one actually does work now there are a few other sketches considering that uh, most of the show is actually conquered by Bobby Benson and his baby band and Pigs in Space. Uh, there are a few other small elements as well. Uh, there is actually a talk spot where Elky Summer talks with Gonzo and they would reveal that Miss Piggy doesn't actually speak French and that uh, the most French that she would actually know, she would actually get it off of a perfume bottle. Um, you know, honestly, with that, they could have explored more with what kind of gags they would do, but... Um, you know, it's actually a really cute and really funny example to show a bit more of Miss Piggy's personality, like, just to get to know her a little bit, and, uh, like, considering we know Miss Piggy, she would often, uh, speak a little bit of French, she would always refer to herself as moi, um, you know, that, that, that's actually really cute, it's actually a really fun little number, and then there is another one where they actually brought back Muppet Sports, and with that one, my god, it actually went through really quick because it's supposed to be like this uh, goldfish hunting contest. And you see the hunter, you see the goldfish, he tries to shoot, like he tries to shoot the goldfish, and then he missed. And literally, that's the whole sketch right there. Um, honestly, I was expecting that maybe they would have done a bit more of a setup, but no, like, I'm, I highly doubt it, it actually went like a whole minute. So that was honestly a bit weird. Now, the one element that I didn't touch upon yet, it was actually the special guest star, and that would be Elky Summer. And with her, I would say she is a bit more of your standard special guest star, but they do reveal more of her uniqueness. Um, it's pretty much like she was the female Christoph Waltz of her day, where, at least in the in the moment where she was talking with Gonzo and Miss Piggy, uh, like, revealing that Miss Piggy uh, can only speak French by perfume bottles, uh, she actually revealed that she was capable of speaking six languages, and you do see a little bit 
of uh, her multi-language capabilities, and that was actually pretty interesting. And if anything, I would say uh, that's the that's probably her highlight of that episode. That was actually quite enjoyable. But then you got the beginning number, and she would actually sing Animal Crackers in My Soup. And that one is actually uh, pretty fun to see what she did, because uh, considering she felt like she's entering upon a kid's show, so she dressed herself up all completely in Shirley Temple, and have like just balloons around her just singing cutesy Animal Crackers in My Soup, and then Kermit would then come in, just interrupt, and, uh, like, you know, just to switch it up a bit, try to add more sophistication. We're also appealing to adults as well. And then she would come back in, like, this is total class, total sophistication, and even bringing up, uh, some backup dancers, and she would dress up complete in Marilyn Monroe style, singing Animal Crackers in My Soup in a more seductive tone. But then Kermit didn't really enjoy it, so... They gotta do it a third time. And this is when things get weird, because now she has to do it in the Muppet style. Okay, uh, I forgot which number it is, I forgot which episode it was, but it was, you, you guys remember back in one of the episodes where there was a special guest star who dressed herself up completely like a bird Muppet and you just see her flying around? Yeah, this is even weirder than that, where you see Elkie Summer's head placed on this weird Muppet-like body with, like, stringy rubber hose arms singing Animal Crackers in My Soup with weird backup dancers. Um, like, the best way to describe it, it's, like, a little bit tamer than that crazy weird thing that ha- Like, you know the number that made absolutely no sense with the detachable heads in Labyrinth? It's a little bit like that. It's just things get weird, things get uncanny valley where you see this- human head attached to this weird Muppet body. It, it was one of the most weirdest things that ever occurred. But then finally there is the finale and like I said before there was the uh, Egyptian ro 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 bit. And honestly, uh, like I said before, it's pretty much like your standard musical number in the Muppets. But honestly, I just find it kind of weird that they have to do this Egyptian theme and go with the song Ro Ro Ro. I don't know if it's either me, but I feel like it just, these are like two completely different themes that somehow they don't really go together. But then again, I thought to myself, well, just a couple of episodes, I saw a Japanese themed Oklahoma. So what the fridge do I know? So overall, I have to say, this is one of the most weirdly structured Muppet Show episodes. The story itself doesn't necessarily work because it doesn't feel like there's a punchline to it. Like, it has a really good setup, but uh, it, the ending was just not as satisfying. There's no end result that uh, kind of concludes this whole scenario with uh, Beaker and Beauregard. The special guest star, I would have to say, is pretty standard. Uh, you know, there is a bit of a uniqueness to her that makes her a little bit different, but in terms of the performances that she would give, there's nothing necessarily that would stand out as much, uh, some th in the same veins of, like, Harry Belafonte, per se. And, um, even though they did actually bring back, uh, a couple of sketches on the same episode, uh, it is rather weird to see that... Uh, oddly enough, for a variety show, there isn't enough variety because most of the episode is pretty much dominated by either Elkie Summer, which is fine, but then also um, taken over by Bobby Benson's Baby Band and Pigs in Space, which I have to say, like, Pigs in Space I could forgive because that was actually really good, but I, I don't know, like, if they just stick with one Bobby Benson's Baby Band, it would have been fine, but yeah, overall... Um, a little bit of a weird episode, but other than that, I guess it's pretty decent. It's rather standard. But anyways, that is pretty much it for this episode of the Muppet Vlog, so I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see if things are going to go back to the regular order onto the next episodes, but we will only know until next time, so see you later, dudes!